So my teaching today is going to start from James chapter 1, verse 21 to verse 20, 25. Now it says, lay them aside, lay apart, lay all filthiness aside. And then he says, receive the, with meekness the engrafted word of God. He's telling them you need to be te teachable. <laughs> Amen. Be teachable. Have a yearning. Be honest. Have a need for the word of God. So you need to come before God's word. Even when you're having our own personal time, we need to be seated in honest yearning with some yearning for his word. Now the Bible says, receive the, with meekness, with humility, the engrafted word. Did that word engrafted speaks of? Implanted. There's something new that comes out of you because the graft of the new graft that has, in, has been implanted in you. And this grafting you are talking about is the grafting that happened to us when we were born again. When you got born again, something was engrafted in us. The Bible says the engrafted word. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23, what does the Bible say? It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God. And you see, the Bible says here, that word is the engrafted word. The engrafted word. It is within the seed or the capacity of living a life that is godly is within the seed. Is within the seed. The capacity to produce the kind of character and nature and behavior that God wants for us in our lives is within the seed. So that seed, that word has to be engrafted. The Bible says, the engrafted word. Then it says, which is able. It is the one that is able, not you. It says, which is able to save your, your souls. The engrafted, the engrafted word. Hallelujah. Able to save. That word save, we know, save salvation, sozo. Salvation is a holistic term. It saved, when the engrafted word was planted in our spirits, what happened? We were born again. Souls is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen. What you, your mind, what you think, that word can transform what you think into what God thinks. Your will, it can change your decisions, you know, the decisions that you make in your life into the decisions, the kind of decisions that God desires. Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. So by the word of God, you'll be able to say, God, may your will be done. Amen. <laughs> and your emotions, because emotions follow you. They follow you what you decide. So when you decide A, B, C, D, your emotions are going to follow. Verse 22, be ye doers of the word, hallelujah, and not hearers only. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. So there are two kinds of groups. There are two groups of people here that you're going to see. There's a group that hears and does not. And then there's another group that hears and, and does do you remember when I was teaching about the parable about um, the foundation? The man who built on the sand and the one who built on the rock. The one who built on sand was a hearer <laughs> and not a doer. Amen. And the other one who built on the rock was a hearer and a doer. Amen. Amen. The Bible re records that the man who built on the rock dug until he reached the rock and that is when he built. Amen. And that is what the same, same, same scripture, same, same way we are looking at this scripture. We are looking at the man who 
hears and does not, and the one who hears and does the word of God. Say, so be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. James was looking at the church and he was saying, oh, guys, why is the word being preached? <laughs> and being preached with a lot of fire, amen. But there is no change in transformation in the lives of people. If it was being preached, then the word was being heard. But now the problem is, it was me not being done. Amen. There was no obedience to the word. Because when there is obedience to the word, there's going to be transformation. There are going to be changes. Amen. Things are going to happen when obedience, when there is obedience in a Christian's life. Amen. Kingdom, the kingdom of God understands what it understands is obedience. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now the Bible says, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, starts with the one who hears and does not do, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass mirror. The word of God is a mirror. It's not a mirror to your physical. It's a mirror to your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual life, if you want to know how your spirit, spiritual life looks like, you can only see in the word of God. You see, when you look at your physical, your outer picture in the mirror, then you can do something about it. You can control your outer, outer appearance. You know? And it's the same way. When you have a look, when you take a look at your spiritual life within you, with the mirror of the word of God, that's when changes can begin to happen. You know, you might think that you are so, you're okay, you know, you are good. <laughs> as long as you are not checking yourself with the mirror of God's word. When you look at the mirror of God, God's word, you are able to see yourself for who you really are. You will be able to tell whether you are a very proud person or you are, a, you are very humble. You will know. You know, outwardly, people, even when people look at you, <laughs> they may not know because it is very easy to pretend. But before God's word, you cannot pretend. The mirror of God's word will reflect your own soul. You want to know whether you are a spiritual dwarf, I'm a, a spiritual teenager, <laughs> I'm a spiritually mature person, Mira nigani, the word of God. The word of God is a mirror. The, the Bible says the perfect law of liberty. Later on, you'll see that statement here in verse 25. It says, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, because the word of God is perfect. You look at the standard. It's the standard of perfection for spirituality. When you look at the word of God, it's the standard. You know? Amen. He's not a human being. He's not collect. He's not any pope <laughs> or, or a cardinal or priest or pastor or apostle or a nani mungine. Those names, big names. No. It is the word of God. Amen. Our standard is God's, God's word. Our standards for living is the word of God. He tells me to see who I am compared to who God is. Because we want to be like him. He is our standard. He is revealed in the word of God. He is revealed in the scriptures. And we want to be like him. So how do we get to be like him? When you look at the word of God. Don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to any other person. Begin to compare yourself with the word of God. The standard is the word of God. It is our template. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It will reflect your spiritual condition. And then he says, deceiving yourselves. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a, in a glass. That's a mirror. He beholdeth himself and goes away and straight away forgets what manner of man he was. This first man, the Bible says, he beholdeth himself. He looks at himself in the mirror. But the word that is used here for beholding is this person who takes a glance. You know? Ile amaramoja, ile, the way men do it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just mess up with you men. Eh? You know, there's you see, the way men look. Men, men have toxic masculinity. They don't even like looking at themselves in the mirror. <laughs> even if they have to. Hmm? Amen. That's how men are. Ladies, you'll see them spending their time on the mirror because they want to perfect the way they look. Amen. Now, this one, the Bible says, he beholdeth himself and goes his way. And you see, he beholds, he takes a glance and goes quickly. <laughs> yeah, a casual glance. Because he doesn't want to see himself the way he looks. It, 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 it feels like God will be revealing too much, too much of himself. He just wants things to remain the way they are. Hallelujah. <laughs> And, and when you ask them what they saw and they looked at that mirror, they will not tell you what they saw. You know, when you just look at it, the mirror is here, you take a glance, and all of a sudden you are gone. You will not see much. Hmm? All you can remember is the you that you saw when you are taking a good, some good time in the mirror some times ago. Amen. This is that man. He beholdeth himself and goes his way and straight away forgetteth because he has refused to take his time to spend his time in the mirror. He just wants a casual glance. It's the same with those who take a glance at the word of God. Those who are just hearers and not doers. Amen. They are here for a spiritual, a, a religious, what do you call it? A, a, a religious flow. You know, church. You know, I have come to church. It has been counted in heaven. I have come to, I have come to church. Amen. That is a hearer and not a doer. That is someone who will quickly forget what I'm even teaching right now, once they leave this place. Amen. Tukitoka tu pale evo, it's gone. <laughs> Amen. When I say James, I ask you outside there, James chapter 1 verse 25, I say, maayo ilikuwa yaka, kanisa. Amen. And that is what will produce the double life. You know, where you come to church, holy, 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 when you go out there, that's, there's a different life. I believe God is speaking to someone right now in Jesus' name. The Bible says straight away, he goes away. He doesn't want to read because it will show them who they are. That word is going to be revealing who they are to them. <laughs> uh, people are not too busy. People are not too busy. People just don't want to see who they are in the scriptures. Amen. Amen. People are not too busy to attend church. No, they just don't want to see who they really are in the scriptures. John chapter 3 verse 20. The Bible says, Everyone that does evil hateth the light. Are you seeing? Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Are you seeing? Verse 17, God sent not his son that they were to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through it. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. This is the condemnation, verse 19. The light has come to the world, 
Men loved darkness rather than a light because their deeds were evil. When your deeds are evil and you enjoy them, you don't want to look at yourself in the mirror because you do not want the mirror to expose you to you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. This is James. James was speaking to a church that was not changing. There was no transformation mm. in the lives of people. Amen. And now he's addressing it. He's, he's saying the word is powerful. The word is like a mirror. When you look at it and when you take action, something will happen to you. There will be change in Jesus' name. The word of God, when you look at it, will, it, will, it will confront any kind of, of a hypocritical life. No, no. Yes, it will expose it. When you are a hearer, you become a doer. When you have heard, you do it. When you are convicted, you respond to that conviction. The forgetful hearer, the one who is not obeying, is deceiving themselves. Because when you keep, look at it, look at it, it says, verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So when you constantly are hearing, hearing and hearing and not obeying, you are living in deception. And in fact, it's got to a place, nowadays people now change the scriptures. People are now allowing themselves to engage in cultures that are anti-scripture and are using scripture to explain their cultures. And you know what, already you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah? The church of the, you know? Amen. Hmm? You've seen in some mainstream ministries where there are men marrying men and they are clergy. Amen? You have seen that, eh? That is what? Deception. Because someone refused to hear <laughs> and do, <laughs> that's why at the end of the day you are seeing what? There's deception. Deceiving themselves. And that's what happens to us. When you consistently keep on hearing and not doing, then we deceive ourselves. We'll now begin to look for explanations for our wrong lifestyle, according to the word. And let me tell you, you will find. <laughs> if you want killing, if you want, if you want to, to, ex, to, to excuse death, you will find it in the scripture. And Judas hanged himself. And David killed Goliath. You want to excuse alcoholism, it's in the scripture. Jesus turned water into wine. Huh? Second Timothy, <laughs> chapter 5, verse 23. Take, drink a little water, uh, uh, sorry, a wine, for your stomach's sake. So you can explain it. Yeah, you can. Amen. Deception. Deception. <laughs> Amen. Let's continue. The Bible says, but whosoever looketh, verse 25, into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, now, this is the doer, the one who obeys the scripture. Hallelujah. He, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man, the Bible says, shall be blessed in his deed. There is a blessing in obedience. It's just that people have not yet got to that point of obeying and seeing the blessing, you know, and then causing them, that causing them to retain, to remain in, in being obedient. He who looks, now this looking here is not like the one who was taking a glance <laughs> because of issues, you know, in their lives. Eh? The looking here is taking your time. This one who is taking time to study the word of God. Gazing, you know, looking intently at that word. Someone, who, you know, is you know, it was scrutiny. Taking his time to scrutinize the word of God. Hallelujah. Thinking about it. 
The Bible talks about, uh, in Psalms chapter 1, meditating on the word day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers. Jo J uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night. The way David was speaking. Look at him when he talks about the word of God. He says, so pure, so righteous. It's a perfect law, the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is someone who is looking for the details. And when you take your time and you begin to look at the mirror, the Bible says, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein. Continuing there is doing. The Bible says, and does the work. <laughs> and does. The Bible says, he continues therein. He is a doer. You know, he's not just a hearer, but he is a doer. Hallelujah. This mirror, when you look at it, you'll see a reflection of you. You'll see yourself. You see the corruption or the things that need to change in your life. And there are needs that should prompt something in you. It should prompt a transformation, need for transformation, a need for change, a need for reformation in your life. Amen. So whenever you look at the scriptures, whenever you look at the mirror of the word of God, Something should be prompted in you. Some action should be prompted inside you. But when you see, when you see a reflection of yourself in the mirror, <laughs> and then you take action, amen? You take action. For example, now the tithing, you've seen, I am not a tither. Take action, you become a tither. The Bible says, the blessing that this man shall be blessed in his deed. There shall be a blessing in your deed. You hearing the word is not just to hear and, and say that was a powerful word. But you see what the scripture is telling us, the end should not be that that was a powerful word. The end should be that it is a message that is prompting an action in my life. When God speaks, Something must change. Something must happen. Amen? Amen? The sons, the servants, the children of God must obey. And you can only obey if you are meek. Receive with meekness. Humility and obedience go together. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, And being found, Jesus Found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Are you seeing? He left his glory, he left the form of God in heaven, came here on earth as a man, he humbled himself <laughs> and became obedient unto death, until death. That's an example from Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to see whether you are a humble person or not, check whether you're obedient. Amen. In the reflection of the mirror of the word of God will show you who you are now, the corrupted image. And number two, it will show you who you ought to be. <laughs> Amen. Who are we supposed to be? It will show you Jesus Christ. The image of the invisible God. So we will be moving from who we are to who we ought to be. And the only thing that can move us from who we are to who we ought to be is when we see the reflection and we take action. Anytime you are not taking action, you are not stepping into the place where God wants you to be. The reflection of God. You are moving from your reflection to God's reflection. Jesus is God's reflection. And we can see him by the scriptures. The scriptures will show us this is the perfection. So this is who I am. You see, 
this is who I am. I'm not, I'm not, I'm the corrupted image, but I need to change. <laughs> I need to be different. Then you begin to take steps. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, Be, I beseech ye, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as what? As living, holy and pleasing before God as a spiritual act of worship. Then says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Amen. But be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your mind. So you are supposed to be every time, any time, any day, anywhere, any Christian is supposed to be in the process of transformation. So you are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. When you are spending time with the word of God, we are renewing our minds. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. The Bible says, For whom he did for no, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That's the reason why we are, that's, that's why we are here right now. To be conformed. We are being transformed from something and being conformed to something else. We are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. It takes seeing the reflection of the word. <laughs> Amen. The of the mirror, Sindio. Hallelujah. It takes the reflection and you taking action once you have seen. It's all about the change. We are to change into the image of that is reflected by his glory in the, in the scriptures. Hallelujah. When you look at the mirror, it changes you. You move from glory to glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do you know what you look like? You become like it. You actually become like what you look like. Now the transformation here that I'm talking about is a change from within you. Because when you see, when you look at the mirror, you see the image of Christ. Christ, when you got born again, he came into your life. He's inside you. When you look at the mirror, now you are, the inside you is coming out. It's a transfiguration. You are changing from within. You are changing and becoming more and more and more and more like Christ. Amen. Let me show you 2 Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse, 16, verse 18. Okay, let's start from verse 12 so that we see the context. Verse 12 says, Seeing then that we have such hope, we also greet, uh, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end that, was that, that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded, for until the day remain, this day remained the same veil, and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away with. When Moses would, would come out of, from the mountain, he used to shine. <laughs> he used to shine the glory of God. He was looking at God and, and the reflection of the, of the rays from the presence of God, you know, will stick on his face. And he will be shining. So the day he noted, when the children of Israel saw him and he noted, he started putting a veil, covering himself. And that was coming from the, from the outside. Now let me show you something else here at verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. He's talking about the children of Israel who have, still have a veil. They have not yet been able to see the Jesus Christ. Verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass, beholding in a mirror, same word of God, the glory of the Lord are changed as we continue to see the, 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 the glory of God. Beholding here in the mirror of the word of God, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Where is the Spirit of God? He's already within us. So we are changed from glory to glory, even as the Spirit, even as by 
the spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are changed. We are changed from our former image to the image of God. Inside us, we are already changed because we are born again. But because of the flesh, because of the outward, there is some things that need to be done. No, no. Amen. Now we are supposed to be moving from this former one, the outer one coming out, being removed, and we now need to begin to reflect the inner us, the true us. Amen. Changed into the image of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Not the former Adam, but the Christ in us. We behold the mirror, the word of God. And as we look at the mirror, we see the reflection of who we are. Amen. And the mirror shows us the standard which we are supposed to be. That is Jesus Christ, like Jesus Christ. And so we are moved. We keep get transformed, get changed every single, single day. But that can only happen when you are a what? When you are a do? A doer of the word. <laughs> Amen. Now, let me tell you something about doing. Doing has got nothing, nothing emotional about it. There's no emotion to doing. Doing, you do it because it's an act of your will. Amen. Kama ni kuamka kuomba, you wake up and just wake up. You don't need to feel anything. When you're praying, just, just, just pray. <laughs> don't try to feel anything. Pray. Pray to God. When I come here, when I take the, 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 the piano, I start playing it and I worship. Feelings come, feelings go. I don't care because it's an act of the will. Amen. Amen. Feelings will come, feelings will go. Don't listen to your feelings. Are you led by the feelings or you are led by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> you are led by, by the Holy Spirit. Isn't there? Not feelings. Amen. Don't ask your feelings where you are going. Amen. <laughs> Don't ask it. Listen to the word of God. Two kinds of people. Hears and obeys. The other one, hears and does nothing. The one who hears and obeys, he spends time in the word of God. Because he's looking for detail. He wants to change. He wants to become more and more like Jesus Christ. But this other one, he hears He's contented, he's satisfied with who he is, or he doesn't want those things, those bad things to be exposed. He just wants to remain the way he is. Now, the Bible has said, if you are a hearer and a doer, the blessing is on you. Amen. Amen. You don't need the hand of a man of God to, to, to bring blessing on your life. No. No. The Bible has said it. Simeon, you've read it for yourself. Let's, let's see it again. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Be a doer of the word of God. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, when you are a doer of the word of God, not even doc, which doctors will stand against you. No, their power is nothing. Is nothing. Because you are a doer. You, when, you, when you are a doer of the word of God, you are under the command of God. Amen. And when you are under God's command, you are a man of authority. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. All of it. Power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then it says, and nothing shall harm you by any means. When you are under authority, when you are a doer, when you are obedient, you are, under the, you, are, you are under control, under God's control. And you, are, and you are under God's control, there are other powers that are subject to you. The power of the enemy and also power over your flesh. The Bible says, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Luke 6, uh, Romans 6.14 shall not have dominion over you. So get under God's authority. Get under God's command. Be a doer of God's word. Amen. And get constantly... Changing, you know, you are moving from who you are to who you ought to be. You are being transformed from the 
outer, from the, the, the outer person, you are now being metamorphosized. New changes are happening from within to without. You are being transformed into the image of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. That is all about the mirror of God's word.